Welcome again to our Sabbath School lesson study for today. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to our lesson discussion in church, Fifth Avenue Ngong, New Life SDA Church. And uh, I'm glad you guys are, are here. And uh, we thank God so much for the blessings that uh, he has given us so far up until uh, this moment in time that we can now focus on uh, on this scripture. We want to welcome our online viewers as well to join us and, uh, you know, um, engage with us and give us uh, some words, some input uh, as we continue this lesson. Uh, with me, I have Christine. Christine, how has been your week? My week has been fine. I thank the Lord for everything and I'm glad to come to Sabbath today. Thank you so much and welcome and God bless you for uh, blessing us uh, in this panel. Uh, with me again is Frank Apia. Frank Apia, Brother Apia, you want to say something and welcome us to this lesson? Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, thank you for welcoming me to the panel and uh, to our online viewers. Uh, please join us as we discuss God's word today. Thank you. You are wow, very welcome and God bless you so much for uh, you know, taking time to be part of this panel that uh, does this uh, study of the lesson. Um, I would just like us to pray as we focus on this lesson, shall we pray? Our oh, Father, eternal King of glory, we thank you for the grace of God in Jesus Christ and the sustaining love of God and the mercies upon which we have been renewed this morning and revived and the blessings thereof that you have protected us and given us another opportunity to worship you in this study and that the one thing that we desire now is that we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent, and that even as we reflect on the study this morning, we pray, Father, for blessings on these panelists who will be discussing this lesson, and the viewers who would be listening and joining us as well, we pray for your blessings all the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So um, uh, we're still on God's mission, our mission. And uh, we, we are primarily focusing on, on our Christian experience, that when we were called to the house of the Lord and we were blessed and we received the call and responded, we said that we are part of the greater mission of God. Right, Christine? And so last week and for the rest of the, the, the weeks, uh, we have been discussing the mission in its various components as broken down by the writer of this lesson. And uh, today, uh, actually last week, we looked at a very interesting lesson, huh? Uh, mission to the needy, isn't it? Did you get a good feeling? What did you go away with that lesson uh, up here? Uh, yes, so... Uh there's a, there's a phrase by Karl Marx that I, I think is always quoted out of context when right. he says that uh, religion is the opium of the masses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, That's very misleading. <laughs> yes. But when you read the, the quote in its full context, right. it actually means that it is the sigh of the oppressed uh, creature right. and it is the heart of the heartless world. Absolutely. So uh, religion and also God himself and Christ yeah. is the balm to those that are poor. Uh -huh. And he's the one that is going to relieve them, you know, from the cares and the worries of this world. Absolutely. And uh, just to read from the book of Acts 3, verse 6, uh, yeah. when uh, uh, John and uh, Peter were going to the temple, you know, they met the, um, a man who was a beggar. Right. Uh, and he was also a cripple. And uh, they told him that, you know, silver and gold... Yes. We have none, we have but none. that such as we have, we give we shall unto give you. you. Yeah. And so even us, the the lesson was calling us to, uh, you know, as we go out to the poor, our goal should be to give them such as we have. And he says that in the name of Christ of Nazareth, rise Arise up and walk. And walk yes. Yes, so we should be a blessing to those that are marginalized in, in the society. Interesting. Yes. And we have a lot of them, Christine, around us. And, uh, and that lesson uh, gave us an insight into what we should do. Uh, and, 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 but there was something interesting about that lesson in that he says that Christ method alone. Christ method alone. W what was your takeaway from that? Actually, that's what stood out for me in the part of the lesson. Right. That Christ mingled mm -hmm. with the people. Mm -hmm. He mingled with the needy. Absolutely. You know, and the story that stood out for me was this man who had been sick for 
chapter 5 verse 9. yes yes and how jesus was just able to go and talk to him where he was sick right. and find out what he really needed yes you know yes. so for me christ method alone is mingling with the people getting to understand getting to the bottom of it yes, yes absolutely to understand how it feels yeah. what it makes them feel you empathize and then now you can convert this i like that jesus. i like that that, is, that that was a good takeaway mm. uh from that lesson and so um today's lesson then is absolutely interesting in the sense that now we we are talking about mission to the powerful yes. you know uh, you know there's a phrase by the media people that says that we speak truth to power uh, <laughs> you know uh, but i i uh, uh, when i went through this lesson i i i got a feeling that uh, hey uh, sometimes we find ourselves in the unique circumstances that we are before the mighty the big and the large and the mighty uh before us and we most of the times do not know how to relate with them you know um and, and and this lesson takes us so straight away into it um the memory text has been taken from the book of Matthew verse 16 i mean chapter 16 verses 26 sorry and where it says that uh, for what profit uh, is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what uh, will a man give in exchange for his soul a very fundamental uh, um a question that was posed by 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 Jesus right there uh Christine that uh, yes you got the whole world okay you got riches you got everything that you need but then you know in the end it becomes uh, vanity it becomes uh, it, it, it doesn't take us anywhere what, what what do we learn from this scripture uh, overall uh, as we Uh, as we take uh, one step into this lesson up here uh, yes we we see that uh, in in our societies we we'll always have those men who stand in in, right. in high regard in the world it could be you know for their education it could be for their wealth right or it could as well be for their calling you know mm. uh, we talk about lawyers we talk about uh, merchants businessmen right yeah we talk about doctors and all these people who are who are, who are like influential in society mm-hmm. but uh, regardless of of their calling regardless of uh, you know where they stand in terms of like their education right regardless of whether they stand in terms of their wealth yes they still have a need for Christ for them know? there's some the same, sentiment somewhere inside of them yes right. and and the same way we were looking at you know that verse when uh, Paul was telling Peter Peter and John were telling the crippled man that uh, gold and silver we have none but such as we have we shall give, give we you. unto you yeah. and even for the rich men they yes. need Christ because without Christ then they are also like lost mm-hmm. our wealth cannot save us yes yeah and all the endowments of life the good things that life can offer Yes. In the face of, you know, the eternal things, they are worthless and the only person we are told that there is no other name given among men that is in Acts 4:12 whereby right. we must be saved and that right. is for all men, not just the, the Not the, just yeah, not just the poor. Exactly. Yeah, but also all men. All men. All men. And for Christine, what, what what is it for you? For me, you know, as as I was looking at the lesson. Right. What stood out for me in the introduction or the overview of the whole lesson is that the day I die Yes. And I am buried. There is no difference whether I had wealth or yeah. I was. Yes, yes. Want. Yes, yes. So at the end of the day, yes. what do I want to be or where will I want to be when I resurrect? Right, right. Therefore, if I want to be in enjoying the eternal life in the heavenly kingdom, mm. then I have to look at the things I have in this world and equate them to nothing. Right. And to ensure that if I am wealthy then I am using it for the benefit of the kingdom. Right. So Jesus Christ therefore came for even that person who has everything and to that who does not have ev- anything because at the end of it all they become they are the same. They are the same. Him. And you know this writer says that uh, God is uh, concerned about the salvation of the rich and the powerful yes. uh, as he is to the weak and 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 to the needy in so much as to bring us then to the understanding that 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 God is in the business of uh, of saving them that are in position of influence as much as he is in a position of trying to save those who are downtrodden and and and, and this lesson uh, is 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 really giving us a perspective 
that whereas there are uh, some uh, among our ranks who we perceive to have gotten to some level of sufficiency, some level of adequacy, uh, so much so that they do not need salvation. But this lesson is drawing us back to the powerful men among us, the presidents, you know, uh, you know, the, the 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 ministers, you know, this <laughs> the sea, <laughs> you know. This week we went to a minister's office and uh, and we went with some some good prayer warrior. And uh, and and so when we went there, uh, she she had a need to tell to the cabinet secretary, and uh, you know when you go to a cabinet secretary, he is he wants to dispose of you very fast. What do you want? Yeah, okay, uh, and then you know like you know this lady was like, uh, was there, Can we just first pray? Uh, and I thought that was extremely powerful uh, uh, right there that uh, there was prayer uh, inside the office of a cabinet secretary. Now, it, 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 it takes us then uh, to this uh, conclusion appeal yes. that um, in the end, it is not our position. Yes. In the end, it is not our influence. And in the end, it is not what we have that other people do not have. Neither is it the other way that those who are down below the uh, bottom line, uh, we call them hustlers around here. Yes, <laughs> we call them hustlers. We've coined that term and we've misused it sufficiently. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so for us today, it is not also for those who are down there to perceive those who are on the top that they do not, they, 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 or, they, or they are not worthy or, 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 you know, there's the, the certain thing about humanity that we have a tendency of dividing fellow human beings into us and, and they, them. you know, us and they, us, 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 we are here and we are very poor. We are only saying mungu to saidia, yeah. eh, 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 but those ones have sufficiency. And yet we do not recognize that there is certain emptiness, a degree in it that, uh, that they need, uh, Christine. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and that takes us to Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, you know, the powerful uh, king in, in, in Babylon. Um, I, I, Pio, I know you are good in this. Can you just uh, give us a perspective to Nebuchadnezzar's story and how then we can relate to it about the mighty and the strong and the how salvation and the grace uh, of God, how it plays in um, right here in this drama of this king? Yeah, so we, we are introduced to Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, and we see him is, uh, at, at this time, uh, Babylon is the superpower of the world, right. and they've conquered the children of Judah, who are God's children, right. and taken them to captivity. Right. And uh, then Nebuchadnezzar forces them to, you know, first of all, he, he brings in the best, the best of the children of Judah and tries to feed them by, you know, by his own kind of uh, food. But they decline that. They say they will not defile themselves. Right, yeah. Then it becomes a matter of worship. Yes. He has a dream and he erects a statue and he requires worship uh, from, from all men. Right. But the children of God refuse to give him that worship. And it, he comes to them and he tells them that, uh, you know, who is that God who will deliver you from my hand? You know, this is a place where we see the greatest uh, men of the earth mm -hmm. who are very powerful and they can do as they wish. Right. Yeah, but so then, he says today that this is the God you'll worship yes, and you worship. Yes. He says this is the way you go and you go. Yeah. A, a man of influence indeed. Go a ahead. A man of influence. Go ahead. But then we see that uh, after his experience with God and, you know, he looks at all uh, that he's been able to accomplish, you know, like uh, building a very great and, and, uh, and marvelous city in, in Babylon. Right. And he says that, you know, all this I've done with my strength. Yeah. And God comes and God reminds him that, you know, that head of gold, I'm the one who set you up there. Yes. And God is telling him that uh, I'm the one who, who sets up kings and, and dethrones them. Right. And God humbles him. And we see him, you know, coming to a point where he acknowledges God. Yes. And, and we are told in the book of, uh, you know, Daniel 4, verse 37, it says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. Right. All of whose works are truth and his ways are justice. Right. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Mm -hmm. He actually acknowledges that God has been able to reach uh, to his heart. And God has been able to, you know... Uh, have an influence in him that uh, uh, that you he, he, he didn't at first acknowledge. Yes. And the the lesson that we get here is that you know the greatest men of this earth are not beyond the power of a wonder-working God. Amen. 
Right. And and for us we need to just be men of opportunity. Yes, and, yes. And part of part of the reason why Nebuchadnezzar was converted was because he had that constant uh, interaction with men like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and and Abednego. Uh, and, Abednego. Right. and even for us we should be men of opportunity and we should not just want to have casual acquaintance with such kind of men, right. but f- at every opportunity it is for us to, you know, uh, speak to them of 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 God and remind them that God wants to awaken in them you know their responsibility with the things that God has entrusted them with and God also wants them to give an account to him who will judge both the living and the dead and the dead absolutely yes. absolutely and you know uh, the principle of the seventh day adventist church is the principle that we say it's unlimited atonement uh, unlimited in the sense that there is no one who has been predestined to yes. to uh, to say uh, uh, to damnation and uh, you know that uh, we drive this theology that says that we are all all um, you know how do i put it in english we 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 are all uh, capable or we we are in a position that we can all be saved Same. universally True. as opposed to a certain small group of uh, people who claim that god has predestined some to salvation and god has predestined some to to eternal damnation and and for nebuchadnezzar in this case and the drama that is unfolding uh, right there in babylon he finds himself in 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 in, in the middle of the assumption that he's an all powerful king Yes. Not realizing that there's also an all-powerful God, God who created him. And, and I, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yes, Christine. I want to point yeah. out something from what Akio was saying. And right. there for Pete, that God sometimes can use yes. you who has been set there right. unexpectedly. You may find yourself in a situation that is unexpected of you. Right. But you're being there like Daniel's situation, him being there. Yes. Was, uh, the way God was going to reach to this powerful man right. by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. But also God himself can decide to intervene. Yes. In the situation directly to influence that yes. person in power so that they can really recognize that he's a God out to bring them back. There is no predestination. Absolutely. A choice is set for y- Yes, yes. And, and, and we can then conclude, uh, uh, Pio, that, uh, that God is in the business of, of ensuring that those in positions of power must then conform to a holy a holy life right uh, you know yes so so for us we you know uh sometimes when we talk about rich people yeah we want to associate with them maybe to get part of you know what they have you right like they might show us some favor and and that might mean we we also like compromise to their you know to their standards yes but god wants us to you know to be an influence to them to turn them away uh, from their mold and we we should be men who desire their good you know we need to awaken in them the needs of the soul and a knowledge of the truth and you cannot take the message to them if you yourself you've not been you know you've not been converted and and I, I think the perfect example of someone who tried at every opportunity to influence uh, uh the rich that he and the powerful that he came across was Paul. Right. Yeah, yes. we see we see Paul, you know, he says uh, in the book of Acts that he was determined. The Holy Spirit told him that you've witnessed to me in Jerusalem. Yes. And now it is determined that you must go to Rome right. and witness to me. Yeah. And he went into the family of, of Caesar. Right. You know, in such a household, you these are people given to indulgence. They are Romans. Right, right. They are, they are men who don't give any honor to God. They, right, they, right. Are, they are given to idol worship. Yes. But we are told that in the household of Caesar, yeah. there were men who gave themselves, you know, to, uh, to, to, to the, to the, to the gospel of, 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 of God. And, and Paul is a perfect example of such a person yes. with the influence that yeah, he had. Yeah, yes, yes. He was able to go even to such households. Yes. And even though he's on trial, yes, just by his disposition and his character. Yes. Is able to have converts even in such even in such, such places. places. Yeah. yeah, but you see, uh, and, and and for Paul, he's affluent. Yes. Uh, you know, for Paul is a is is, is a first pl- a first class uh, scholar. Uh, but but uh, Christine, you you know Nebuchadnezzar actually came uh, into direct confrontation with a God who who humbles those who are arrogant and and proud. And and for him, uh, um, if, if modern day Christians must learn then that. God is in the business of humbling us uh, with our arrogance, with our negligence, with our pride. Uh, God is, is, is trying to confront us in that very circumstance. And sometimes it's not easy. 
you know, for him, you know, um, how do we, uh, how, how do we uh, break down that uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar uh, is the king of the most powerful uh, empire kingdom then, uh, so to speak, yes. and he has completely destroyed Jerusalem and he has taken captives out of Jerusalem and the same captives that he has taken have come to his household and he's trying to give them the best, you know, he picks some Hebrew boys, uh, four of you, hey, hey, come. Come, you, you, you look, uh, you look handsome, and you look like you can be, uh, you know, you can be trained to be, uh, to be good scholars here in Babylon, and uh, and uh, and the first thing is that they challenge him. They say, no, we're not going to take your food, your food, Mm-mm. we're not going to do it. Um, your gods, Mm-mm. we're not going to do it. The ability for someone to stand for God, even in very very difficult circumstances, isn't it? Yes. For the four Hebrew. Um, yeah, boys. Uh, we always find ourselves in circumstances, but it is very difficult right. when you are away from your beliefs, uh-huh. when you are not in your comfort zone. Right. So where you are, it is strange. It is not common. The common practice is different from what you have been brought up in. That is the situation these Hebrew boys were in. Right. But I like that the common practice, in as much as it was not in the outside environment, it yes. was embedded in their hearts. Right. And so, because so much so that it was not superfluous. Ah, it was yes. not, yeah, it's like, not something that... Uh, you could not even take it away from them. Like, uh-huh. It is inbuilt. It is uh-huh. who they were. Yes. That is why it was not difficult for them to say, we will not, yes. we shall not bow. Even right. if our God does not help us... We, we will not, still not do it. Yes. Uh-huh. We are good to go because they knew who they had believed in. So if uh, I find myself in such a situation, uh-huh. then I need to have anchored my faith in the, on, word of God, in the word of God, so that I become the best missionary. Uh-huh. Yes, and, yeah. and, and just reading from the book of uh, Proverbs 22, 29, it says that, seest thou a man diligent in his business? And diligence here would be even like how faithful we are to, to God's word and the calling of God. And it says, he shall stand before kings and he shall not stand before mean men. Right. And so for us, the call is just to be true to our principles, you know. Let us be faithful to what to the calling that God has given us. And that way we will be able to, God will be able to ensure, you know, even when we stand before kings, as Christ says, he will give us utterance and even the answers to give to those men. Absolutely. Even if we are not rich and powerful by the world standards, why must we be careful to avoid the, 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 the kind of arrogance that these king had manifested and 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 that is the question uh, that we asked ourselves yes we you know what is the explanation to this what possibly would be the reason why why a king would choose to be uh, you know to to uh, to take it uh, to that level Uh, and 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 we arrive at uh, at one conclusion that some of us might have a tendency who are in position of power even right here in this church would have a tendency, um, uh, you know, to to, 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 look, uh, to look down, to yes. be the all-knowing people yes. that we do not even take the idea of, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the, the small, what we consider to be, uh, you know, the very bottom of the pyramid uh, actors uh, down there. <laughs> Isn't like it? They trust in their yeah, abilities. absolutely. Yes. That if I got here to this position, then what can you tell me? <laughs> and it, you know, it takes yeah, they think it takes gotten, you to a story. Yeah, they've gotten there by caprice. When you look at even when we are discussing the story of Jonah, right? And and Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because he remembers even the way Sennacherib was talking yeah, to, yes, yes. to the children of, of Israel <laughs> and telling them, you know, yeah. if, even like the, the the gods of the other nations have not been able to deliver the other nations from my hand or the hands of my fathers or my ancestors. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Arrogance. arrogance. I, you know, you know, arrogance. One day we had a problem. <laughs> There's this story that uh, you know uh, you you have a, you have a, a height that you have to pull a car. And everybody's like, how are we going to pull it? The car is a bit higher than the height. And the, the, all the engineers are looking at themselves until someone says, uh, you, uh, you know, a driver, what do you think should we, we should do? And the guy says, why don't you just, uh, just remove, the, deflate a little bit the, the, the wheels. It will come a little bit down. Then, then, then take it through the barrier. And, uh, and yet the engineers do not have thought about that. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm saying that in relation to, 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 to what we're talking about. Because it brings us to the other character called Naaman. Uh, because Naaman, 
uh, finds himself in the circumstances. Actually, let's go there. Let's go to the book of um, let's go to the, uh, First Kings, right? That's the book second of Kings. yeah, Second Kings. Sorry, Second Kings chapter five. He, he, that story we draw it from Second Kings chapter five, and Second Kings chapter five draws. A, a, a picture of a very powerful uh, five-star general, uh, a commander of the army of the king of Syria. It says, uh, I read it verbatim, um, uh, uh, chapter 5, beginning from uh, verses 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because... Uh, by him, the Lord had given him victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but, but, a leper. You know, that introduction of this man alone is enough to, 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 to the characterization that has been given uh, yeah, by the writer of Kings is that uh, he is, first of all, a, 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 an accomplished soldier. A career general, you know, five star, that the Lord had given him, and and, and I take note of that appeal, that it says that the Lord had yes. given him victory. Uh, break it down a little bit for us. Uh, yes, you know, sometimes we think that uh, the blessings of God are confined to those that are faithful to God. Right. But as we've seen time and time again in the discussion of this lesson, it says that you know God, he rains, he sends rain and sunshine to both the wicked. And the good. And the good. Yes. Yeah. So God is is the is the one who bestows blessings on all men, whether you know they give him the deference that he deserves or not. Right. And so for us, we should know that you know God is not confined to just uh, those people that acknowledge Him. We right. are told that uh, at the end of of the of the age, every knee and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm. It might not be something we see now, but everyone in all lands. You know, everything that they have is from God himself. And, and you know, we are told that this was a Syrian, first of yes, all. Yes, he's a Syrian, yes. yes. But yes. even though he's a Syrian, God still wants to reach out to him. God is not just confined to doing, uh, you know, like accomplishing and doing uh, wonders for the children who are in Israel. But he also goes even to such lands as, 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 Syria. as, as a Syria. Yeah. And you know, this is, uh, uh, and th- that, that story, that story takes us step by step to, to, to a maid because they had taken captives and they had actually yes. brought a maid, you know, a little girl uh, to their home state. And, uh, and, and the girl, and the girl says, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, um, and, and we read again, uh, let me read uh, verses three and four. Uh, in chapter 5 of Second Kings that says, Then she said uh, to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And the girl is, has no iota of doubt about the ability of that prophet yes. in Samaria who, is, who will heal him. And what, this, is, this was Elisha, right? Yes. yes. So, so, Christine, what, what is it? What, what is your take, what, uh, you know, generally around this story of uh, General Naaman? Uh, first, this girl, she, yeah. she, she, we don't even know her name. It's not even mentioned. Yes. yes. And, and it takes me to how God sometimes uses people who we don't even know. People yeah. you have not thought of are the greatest missionaries for God. So if we link with the... the Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, they are probably they are coming from rulership families and homes. They had an idea. They were cream de la cream probably during right, that time. Right. But this is a small girl in her own home who knows about the prophet in Samaria. And I like her confidence in, 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 in the ability of the prophet in Samaria that she's not even afraid to approach. She goes and says, how I wish, because in my version it says, and, and, and she said to her mistress, if only my master would see see the prophet who is in Samaria, come mm. into contact with that pro- prophet. And then Naaman, out of his desperation to, heal, to be healed of his leprosy, takes that word as it is right. from a servant girl. He right. moves forward with it to pursue healing. And, and God then exerts himself in that process mm-hmm. to ensure that Naaman 
is ministered to. Is ministered to. So if this servant girl was not willing or did not have the ability or did not know or right. have an idea yeah. of this prophet, then I believe God would have come up with a way, yes, because God has a thousand and one ways. But then she will not have had the opportunity to participate right. in the right. deliverance or the changing or the conversion yeah. of Naaman. Right. And then Naaman himself, in, in this story, it is interesting because after he has, he has had his doubts, because when he was told, then so he was told, go and wash in verse 10. Right. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored to you. And you will be cleansed. And Absolutely. Come to speak to him. Say, right. Go and wash. So he had a lot of doubt. Why am I going to wash in River Jordan? Right. It's that we have several rivers, but the man of God stood his word. If you really want to be healed, and then unconverted servants of Naaman convince him again. See how God uses people who are not regarded highly to ensure that someone who is of high stature has been ministered to. So for me those those are situations that stand out. That you don't need to be a person in the society. And by a person I mean you don't have to be powerful but you can be used to minister to a very powerful person. Absolutely. Like part of that person's ministry. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And then you know um, uh, when I look at this thing uh, uh, again uh, this, uh, this, this, this experience for Naman was humbling. You know, he was used to all uh, all these services around him, yes. all the honor that comes with the general, yeah. uh, uh, and that comes with power anyways. And he wasn't used to being told, you know what, uh, the, the, you, you go, 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 just go shower. You know, go and dip yourself seven times. And, and for him, it, it took humility mm. up here uh, for me. That's what I, that, that was, I, I, think, I think God um, had to work on his heart first, that whereas you are a five-star general, whereas you, you claim to be to have won, I don't know how many wars for the Assyrians, but, but there is a moment of humility that comes to every powerful man. Isn't it uh, uh, appeal? Yes. When you look at the, the gospel, the gospel is such a... Paul calls it, you know, like the foolishness of the preaching of the cross. Right. And in our world today where people, people are, you know, people are learned, people are... Uh, you know, they, are, they, they have had, you know, the highest kind of education they can have. Yeah. We are told that uh, such kind of people would re- disregard it, 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 like the word of God and the preaching of the cross. But Paul tells us in Romans 1 verse 16 that, you know, he's not ashamed of the gospel of God. And he says it is the power unto salvation. Yes. And he says, you know, to the Jews first, but also to the Greek. And right. so this kind of, you know, gospel, God wants it to be, he, he knows, you know, like there will be people who will be ashamed of it, but he's not just confining it to those that know him. He also wants it to go out even to those circles of men that, you know, currently when we look at them, we think they are too proud to receive such a, such a word. And, and we see that Naman, even though he was, he was, he acknowledged God that, you know, God can save, he still also didn't know how to worship God. And and he even tells he even tells when you read the book of uh, Second Kings, chapter five verse seventeen, we're told that and Naaman said, "Shall there not then I pray you be given to 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 thy servant two mules burden of earth for thy servant, uh, who will henceforth offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto unto, unto the Lord? In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to right. worship there." Mm. And he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Ramon. When I bow down myself in the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And, he's, and uh, you know, Elisha tells him that, go in peace. And he, and, and he departed, you know, and went his way. So for him, even though he, was, he, he acknowledged God, he still didn't even know how to, how to worship this God. But yes. Elisha tells him, you know, like, go in peace. And he tells him that God will teach you in the fullness of time. You might not know how to approach God now. You might still look at the Bible and think that the things they are in and the miracles there don't make sense. They are not in line with your, your, you, how you would thought uh, initially. But God is going to bring us to a point where we will know 
how to approach him and even how to worship him and so you know for now man yeah, yeah absolutely I, I i i that is a good uh, takeaway on that part uh, and for now man he, he didn't even it didn't even make sense to him uh, christine yes. he didn't even know how god did it and and there are certain miracles that come to us and and there are certain things that god has done to us in some way that when we look back we say how did that even happen Yes. Uh, because we have a god of miracles and the same same god uh, that we we talk about that healed Naaman and provided that miracle is the same god that works in our lives today isn't it Indeed. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah, the same yeah. God. And, and you see god sometimes doesn't want you to know the bible back to back yes just you have a receptive spirit absolutely so that he can always exert himself a daily conversion uh-huh. because the response of Naaman still shows that he still has the element of paganism that that shows him that if he takes those soil and put it where he wants to worship that is when he's worshiping a true god right but the answer for elisha specifically tells him go in peace in short you don't need that soil you only need to go with god in your heart he will handle the rest for you yes so yes even today god ministers in like manner to you and i Go in peace. Yes. yes, and the and the concept of grace again is 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 demonstrated yes. Yes. that uh, that that God was so gracious to Naaman, and 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 as much as he was powerful, God is then gracious to every individual who sits in a position of power uh, uh, right now. And even for this lesson, uh, our online viewers uh, would want to appreciate that uh, we are talking about. Uh, the mission to the powerful and that god is in is is, is um uh, i i miss the words uh, but but i want to say that god is in the business again yeah. of of making sure that we christians who have received certain light like this little girl who knew that there's a prophet in in samaria who could heal Naaman, are also in a position of uh, of taking the gospel to the mighty do you have a takeaway, uh, one last one uh, for you on Naaman uh, Abiyo? Yes. Uh, yeah. Act 17, uh, 31 tells us that, you know, in terms of ignorance, God winked. Yes. And so even even for us, you know, like as we go out to uh, minister to, to the rich, uh, we should give them time and we should allow them, you know, the grace to come uh, and learn from God day by day. Yes. And in that process, God will, you know, he will disarm them of, you know, even their lack of humility and god will humble them with time you, you know when i look at it again uh, more broadly uh, the, 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 this lesson is challenging us challenging us in the sense that sometimes we 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 just pass by those who are powerful like that lady who told the cs let's pray first you know let's pray first i know you are about your official duties uh, but uh, let's pray first before we start this meeting. I, a, a, a clear uh, indication that uh, us who have received this light must take it to to the world or the ones who are the most powerful, who are the influencers of society. People uh, we call them uh, opinion uh, what opinion shapers. Oh yeah, opinion shapers. Uh, people who shape opinions like General Naaman. And uh, but then there's something else, uh, Christine. That some it's not all the time. You know, Naaman was uh, a likable guy. The only, his only problem was leprosy, but he is by all means a respected guy, uh, someone of honor in, in Assyria. Uh, actually, uh, a writer has talked of uh, Neman as this guy who was larger than life in the, in the, in, in, you know, in the eyes of the people of, of Assyria. But then there are other powerful people among us who are so we perceive them to be so wicked and we have very negative perception about them and this was the scenario in nicodemus uh, uh, nicodemus uh, case um, in palestine uh, uh, how do we how do we build this uh, christine that uh, um, that this guy nicodemus is the tax collector chief of them and 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 and, and, and salvation Nic- came to him. Nicodemus is, is that one who went to Jesus at night? Yes, at night. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Because the tax collector, I think... Is, 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 is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus yes. yes. Is Zacchaeus. You see, the, the, the reaction of Zacchaeus... And Nicodemus is, 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 <laughs> is something else. Is something else. But, but for Nicodemus, he yes. thought that he's so powerful, he doesn't even need to go during... 
Nicodemus was not afraid. You see, he was a Pharisee. You know those people, they had a perception of Jesus Christ. Right. And to them, Jesus was not the Messiah. But yeah. Can, can something good come out of Galilee? Yes. Can something good come out of Nazareth? Yes. You know, that, that one is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, thinking the verse. It's in the book of John. Yeah, that, 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 like, those are the words of uh, yeah, Nathan. Yeah, yeah he said that, can anything good come yeah. out of Nazareth? Do you think something good can come from Nazareth? Yes. I think that is in the book of uh, John. Should John be John one, seven, verse fifty-two. Maybe up here you can check it for me quickly. Yeah. But let me say something about Nicodemus as we we confirm the verse if it is uh, verse fifty-two. Right. So Nicodemus is a learned man. He's going to school. He's schooled <laughs> very well on the issues of the Bible and right. mostly of the Old Testament. Yes. So he's a person of 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 uh, high regard. Yes. Among the Jewish nation. Right. And so. He cannot go to Jesus during the day. Yeah. So he'll be like, so why are you going to consult this man? Yeah. But then he goes to Jesus at, at night. Yes. At night. In the dead of the night. And Jesus also recognizes him as a, as, as someone of influence in... Um, yeah, in, in his community. In, yes, in his community. See, uh, in verses uh, 2, he say, it says, yes. John chapter 3, verse 2, he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. Yes. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if it were not God with him, if God was not with him. In short, Nicodemus, in as much as he was a Pharisee, he recognizes that this Jesus is a special one. He has come from God because the things he does can only be done by God. Yes. But he does not want to come out publicly. Yes. But Jesus also does not want to throw him or make him feel uncomfortable. So they continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. And Jesus now tells him that you must be born again in verse 3. I yes. tell you the truth. No one yes. can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And, and Nicodemus is wondering, how can he be born again? Yes. What is this thing? What does it mean to be born again? Yes. So Nicodemus, no matter how learned he was, he still needed a savior. Right. He still needed to understand the influence that God has or needs of y his life. Yes, yes. So sometimes then this tells, reminds us that you may look at someone and say, ah, but this person, he's the elder of this church. Yes. He teaches the, the baptismal class. Yes, yes. The 28 fundamental beliefs. Yeah. So he knows everything. Right. But God knows the heart. Yes, he yes. He knows that in as much as you're reading that word, there is still some understanding some right. conversion that is still needed. That is you. needed in the person. Yeah, so the discussion in the book of John chapter 3 from verse 1 all through yes. to verse 12 yes. is Jesus trying to exert and deliver this 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 learned man. Because yes. in verse 10 he says, you are Israel's teacher. Jesus recognized that he's an Israel teacher and says, yeah. but you do not understand these things. Yes. How is it possible that you have read but you have missed this? So it is possible that we may have read, but, but we, we have missed it. it. We have missed it all. So we also need to witness, even to those we think are very learned, those we think know everything. They also need to be ministered to. Did you? Did you were you able to confirm the verse for us? Appeal? Yeah, it's uh, John seven verse fifty two. It says, mm -hmm. "They answered and said unto him, At thou also of Galilee, search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet." Absolutely, yeah. You know, they say <laughs> they looked upon upon Galilee. Yeah. They said, as in nothing, nothing can really. Yeah. What, what else can come? But for 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 Nicodemus, mm -hmm. you know, that introduction says that he's a ruler of the Jewish. Yes. You know, so he's a man of status, uh, appeal yes. for in all intents and purposes. Yeah. Uh, but um, but you see, he still wanted to maintain the status quo. You know, I go at night so that during the day I still remain and keep my stature. Yeah. Yeah. I go to this rabbi who has been preaching, uh, but then during the day they still see me as the same Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Uh, yeah, we, we see that, you know, like uh, in high society and, and people in high social positions, Right. Uh, many of them are, are hard so and, you know, and they are sick of the vanity that they interact Was with. Was it a crisis of confidence? Yeah. Do that, was, that, that, was, that, that was it, but there, there was an underlying issue. Right. And, and we see that, you know, he was longing for a peace, which until then he had not known. Right. And I think when he looked at Christ, he saw his, you know, his moral influence and his commanding spiritual and, and intellectual stature. And he was like, this is a man I would want to fashion myself after. Yes. And that's why he went, you know, looking for Christ. And we're told that, you know, in the very highest ranks of society, there are those who are hungering 
and thirsting for the kind of peace that only Christ can give. Can come from, right? Yeah, that the world cannot give, yeah. and they cannot get it even in the in, in the things that uh, that the world offers has offered them. Absolutely, like, up till now. absolutely. Yes. And you know, you must have heard uh, Christine that Jesus was preaching and saying that I came to seek and to save. He he said in the streets that uh, peace I leave you, peace that the world cannot cannot. Can- to give, give yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, the, right, the right. People who were with Jesus, yeah, how yeah. They were just confident, they were yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so it was the content, yeah. Yeah, so it, it was more about the content, but also the moving power and the influence that uh, that, that this Christ uh, had come with. And he battled inside himself yes. for, for a long time. Could this be the Messiah? Because he's a Pharisee yeah. he, in, 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 in all stature, uh, you know, probably the highest stature, uh, being a ruler. And Nicodemus must have battled inside himself. Uh, what is it then for us, the Pharisees? We follow the law to the later, but this guy has come and somehow disrupted us, you know, around here. So he goes to him at night, uh, you know, um, saying, uh, look, uh, I-, I need this salvation that you talk about. I need this repentance that you talk about. Uh, 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 what-, what shall I do? And Jesus says that you must be born again. Yeah, it, it is a condition. And, and Jesus did not even negotiate with him. You must be born okay. a- again. There has got to be a change, a quantifiable change. Yes. Uh, uh, what 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 we say? What, what we say is a paradigm shift from uh, from from what you are doing right now. That you want to remain a Pharisee, but you still want salvation. You can't have it both ways, can you? Yeah. One. Or the other. Or the other. Yeah, uh, and yeah. even Proverbs 11 verse 4 tells us that, you know, riches profit not in the day of wrath. Right. But righteousness, you know, is useful uh, for, for God's people. Yes, yes. And, and, and you know, that story again in, uh, in Matthew chapter 19 verse 16 of that rich man ties in with, 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 with this lesson. That a powerful, come, a powerful man comes to Jesus. Uh, can we take it? Can we, can we take it a little bit in uh, Matthew 19 verse 24 where he says, And a man, and, and again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the, e, the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Because he came to Jesus and Jesus told him, okay, go and sell everything. All, all that you all, have. All that you have. And what happened to him? He went. He went away sad. He went away very sad. Yeah. And, and so this lesson says that uh, there is a problem uh, with the rich that the ones who have had experience in Christ must be seen to have taken this mission of God to them up here. Uh, for you. Uh, yes, you know, the book of Luke 12, verse 34 tells us that, you know, where your treasure is, there, then you're, where there your, your heart, heart is. will be also. Right. And so, you know, for Christ to answer us to, you know, like, uh, search our hearts, where, where, you know, what are, what are the things that are holding us back? Th- these kind of, you know, things like uh, honors, titles, pedigrees, ancestry, family connections, you right. know, great offices, and also like honorable acquaintances. None of these things, they yes. lead us to God. Right. And, and when Christ comes, he will, you know, he will give us such a message that it will be such a hard thing. The, the truth will cut our hearts to the point that, you know, we, we see it is so pointed. We are told that the man was sad and he went away, you know, grieved. And, 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 and God wants just to remind us that, you know, many things that he, he wants us to yield to him, is 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 doing it so that you know we when we give it up, he is able to give us that. He is able to take away that which hinders us heavenward. Absolutely. And that was the experience. Absolutely, with this, with this absolutely. Man. And and I love this lesson because it finishes with the mission to the powerful, yes. uh, which is actually the heading. Because it says then uh, Jesus' example, just like 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 last week, yes. it concludes with Jesus' method is the best method, yes. that you are a friend to the mighty as much as you are a friend to, to the downtrodden, if you are going to be an effective uh, missionary uh, for Christ. And, and, and that part was interesting because until this time, we have had nothing of Joseph of Aramadea until suddenly uh, this rich man appears. You know, we've not had anything. It's not been written anything about, 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 about Joseph. Yes. But there are many powerful uh, people that came to Jesus, and, and Jesus' method just worked. It, it had a way of drawing even the most powerful. Yes, yes. To just act. 
even even if, even if you didn't know about Joseph of Arimathea, yeah, because in the book of Matthew twenty seven fifty seven fifty six, yeah, where we see him going, yes, to Pilate and asking for Jesus, go yeah, to because he has the he has the most beautiful sepulchre, yes. you know, he, he has very yeah. close, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Golgotha. yes. So this then proves that. Jesus had very many powerful Ye, followers yes. who had not come out Al, clearly. Yeah, albeit very silent. Yes, very silent. Yeah. Silent yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even this church, uh, you know, there are certain people that tell me that they follow, uh, you know, um, someone sent me a screenshot of uh, this lesson study, someone who is not an Adventist, uh, who just always just admires and sent me the link that I didn't know you, uh, you, 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 you guys uh, usually have such an uh, engaging Bible study. And, and for all I know she's not, uh, uh, you know, she's not a member of this church. So, Apio, let, let's have some take homes from this lesson. Uh, some, some few uh, points to for us to take home as we draw to a conclusion of it. What is it for you? A take home, yeah. one or two? Yeah. So, like, uh, engage ourselves in learning how to minister to the powerful. Right. Because these are people who, at the whim, you know, at, at their whims, they can even have us, you know, uh, be executed if we speak something that is incongruent to their life. Right. We remember the story of uh, of, of John, yes. for example, when he he sort of like went out and condemned Herod for marrying uh, Philip's wife Herodias. Right. And we are told that Herod shut him up in prison. Yes. And yes. Uh, but we also see another contrast of a man, uh, Nathan, who came to David, and you know, he told David of a story. He built it up to the point that he told David eventually that, you know, thou art the man. And at that point, David was already convicted. So right. we need to be very wise in how we approach this. Absolutely. People. Absolutely. Thank you. And for you, Christine, what is the take home? For me is we cannot, in as much as we look at people and we think they do not maybe fit our area of mission, right. but they are also not similar. So even if they are in places of power, we must approach them differently. See, Jesus approached the rich young ruler by telling him, go sell everything you have, then come follow me. But that was not the same to Zacchaeus. It was different. Yes, it for Zacchaeus, he, has to, he, he had to go ahead. Yeah, you he know. didn't even he, have to be told sell. No. He, he knew that Zacchaeus was not tied to his riches. His heart was not yes. tied to his riches. Completely so disconnected us, from it, yes. It is a challenge to me. When I'm going for ministry, let me not overthink or overexpect that probably this person, this is the way it is. Let me keep an open mind for the mission and just go forth uh, and share. And then absolutely. Let, it, let God do the uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. We thank God so much for, for this lesson because it draws us into uh, certain quarters and challenges us in, in, in our effectiveness for mission and how we are prepared uh, for it, especially this lesson that has challenged us on how do we minister and how do we take our mission to the, to the mighty and, uh, and to the rich. And so uh, I want to thank you. I have so a final yes. uh, comment. I think uh, it would be good to read you know, the book of... Uh, First Timothy six. I'll just read it quickly. Right. Uh, from verse uh, nine. It verse says, nine. First Timothy but six. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and artful lusts, uh -huh. which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. All evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Right. But you, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love patience and meekness fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto you are also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses absolutely yes and that is the the message that we is the summary should. that is a good way exactly. uh, to finish this lesson yeah. and so we want again to invite you uh, one more for uh, another lesson study uh, next sabbath yes. and and we will be here and we will uh, we will then break it down for you and so I just want to, uh, to request you, Christine, to give us a, a closing prayer, please. Thank okay. you. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for being with us. When we began, we asked for your presence, and we have experienced your grace, love, and mercy. Today we have been reminded that we can minister to the powerful men in the society, and you are also willing to exact your authority through us. So we ask you that you may give us strength to take up this challenge and to speak to these people who we think are unapproachable. But Lord, humble us. Humble us and give us your word.
that word which is relevant for that particular individual. They challenge us, oh Lord, to take it up so that we can also share this mission to them that when the poor are being saved, the rich will also be saved. That mm. they will use their riches and their situations and, and uh, places of power to influence your mission to the others. Thank you for this morning. Bless each and every individual who is here and even that who is yet to understand this word. May the Holy Spirit explain it and expound it to, to them in a still small voice. Take care of us through the remaining part of the Sabbath, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.